Hello everybody, my name is Tony Singh and this is my story. So, um, growing up, being the only child in the family, there um, had a lot of restrictions, there were a lot of things I was supposed to do and not supposed to do. My parents were able to have a lot of attention on me. So going to church was going to church, reading my Bible, morning devotions were something that I felt was just something that I had to do just because my parents still want to do it or just because of my parents are doing it. I never really saw the real meaning, the deep meaning about it. I never knew what the importance was. So I won't really say growing up, I won't really say I was born again. I was a Christian, yes, but born again, not really. So um, when I got to secondary school, I gave my life to Christ. And before then, I had some um, really, really bad anger issues. I could get angry for over the slightest things, things that were so stupid and didn't really make sense. I could get really, really angry about it. And then I could go around destroying things and saying things that hurt people. So when I became a Christian, when I became born again, I tried the very first time I became born again, I tried controlling the anger. But I'll just say that I wasn't really into Christ the way I was supposed to be. I was like, I was the kind of person that every time there's altar call, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. So when I finally, finally, finally gave my life to Christ, I was able to find this unexplainable peace and patience with people that um, when you do the slightest things that usually will get me angry, I just used to brush it off and then, um, and then it to be very, very like, it's nothing actually. So I got to realize that being a Christian, yes, you have God on your side, you have God everywhere with you. You're having faith, yes, but it's not usually very, very easy like that. Because when people know that you're a born again Christian, when people know that, yes, okay, she's a Christian, that's when everybody wants to, you know, provoke you. They want to test to see if you truly have a born again Christian. Because one thing about humans, uh, one thing about we humans is that unless you test something unless they are very very if someone says that this and then unless you make sure by yourself that what the person is saying is true you will never believe it so i got provoked a lot of times but i was able to you know crawl down and have my understanding in christ then another thing i got to learn was faith I was this kind of person that I didn't really trust people like that. I I didn't really like seeing people and then I didn't really have that deep kind of faith in Christ. So I I was writing a particular exam in senior school. When I was in secondary school, SST, and then I didn't read for that paper. I wasn't ready at all. And then the woman was telling me that I should just pray. I just pray and have faith in God. But I was just pushing it up as like, oh. So when I was reading, going through my books, the, the spirit was telling me to read the particular topic. And I said, no, I want to read this topic. And then I ended up reading the topic I wanted to read. When it gets into the exam hall to run my test and then nothing I read came out so I really really failed that test. So the point I'm trying to bring out is that having faith in Christ is another crucial point of being a Christian. You know being a Christian is not just about knowing God, reading your Bible, going to church, 
evangelism but also having faith and understanding the person you're serving understanding the, the way the person you're serving does his, his things and then trusting the person even to the point of dying for the person is a very very crucial point in being a christian so wrapping up i would like to say to everybody that um it's not going to be an easy journey serving god so like someone told me that serving god is never going to be easy you don't call serving god you don't jump into christianity just because of you know that when you serve jesus he's going to do this he's going to do that whenever you pray he does that for you there's no christian that will never go through temptation even jesus christ went through temptation so it's going to be very very hard but nobody is saying it's easy it's going to be very hard but putting your faith and your hope in christ putting your thoughts on jesus is going to be the most it's going to be the best thing you've ever done so thank you very much that um, when I was in just one, when the kidnappers came to my school, and then um everything was very very crazy. It was really every the entire school was in an opera where everybody was confused. There was confusion. There was fear, and then. Our chaplain just, our principal just came to us and told us that we should just have faith. We should just believe in Christ and have faith in Him. I didn't understand what He was telling us then, but I decided to just believe what He was saying. And then we went to the hostel and we we're praying. We we're praying real hard. We we're praying, 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 praying. And then the day because they kidnapped some students and the day the kidnappers brought them back we were in church and our principal was like we just praise god because we know that god has done it and then i'm like what kind of confidence is this we don't know if they are dead we don't know where they are we don't know what's wrong with them and they are telling us to praise god why i mean he hasn't done anything yet but now i understand that the fact that we that were in the school no one was killed nothing happened to anybody there was no one that had an attack nobody died as a result of shock and when i think about it to praise god somebody just came running in and saying that the girls are back as well like in the midst of praising god god brought back the girls that were kidnapped so I think now I understand what he was really trying to tell us then that sometimes when you want something from God, he might not do it immediately. He might not do it when you want. He might not do it in the way that you want to. But when you keep praising him and you keep glorifying his name and you keep putting your trust and your faith in him, he's going to do it. Even if if he knows that it's for your own benefits, you surely go to it. Thank you.